praise the lord praise the lord hallelujah hallelujah to raise our hands and say hallelujah 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 thank you jesus praise you jesus hallelujah good evening dear brothers and sisters today we celebrated one of the most beautiful sacraments of the church the sacrament of reconciliation getting reconciled with god are you happy praise lord hallelujah it is after a good reconciliation that the holy eucharist makes meaning and becomes an experience for that is exactly what the eucharist is supposed to be for us it is supposed to be an experience that is why the church would teach us and say that the eucharist is the source the summit and the center of christian life the eucharist is the source the summit and the center of christian life what the church intends to tell us is that the eucharist is supposed to be the strength of our christian life we derive strength to live our christian vocation with the power of the holy eucharist praise the lord but though this is what the church teaches us many times this is not our experience many times the eucharist just turns into a very bland experience for us maybe it just ends up as a big show as there's a lot of mechanical behavior during the holy eucharist that is why it turns into a ritual at times there's a little joke told about a priest who came in for the eucharistic celebration and he started the words of the mass in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit and that is when he realized that the mic system was not working and therefore he said there is something wrong with this mic and all the people answered and also with you because whatever said and done the third sentence in the mass is and also with you so whatever the priest says i don't mind it becomes a ritual mechanical behavior dear brothers and sisters many times even the way we approach the eucharist it does end up as a big show a stage is put up and therefore a big show going on and all of us are busy watching sometimes even the word that we use gives an indication of that if you're on your way to mass and someone asks you where are you going invariably the answer will be i'm going to see mass and that is exactly what we come and do we come we stand and we watch a show happening and we are watching at times even our stance gives that away have you ever seen this kind of a stance for the eucharist you know what this stance basically means it basically means yes i'm watching let me see what you're doing and that is how the eucharist starts and end it becomes a big show that's why a little joke is told about a young child who was attending his first holy eucharist he was around 6 or 7 nowadays you have a lot of these new age parents with a lot of new age concepts in which they say the child should become a little more bigger for them to go for mass and therefore this child was attending his first mass when he was around 6 or 7 and he was seated in the children's room In many of the new parishes you have a children's room at the side it's completely covered with glass and the children can scream out their lungs and nothing will go out and he was seated in that room and for his bad luck the speaker system in that room was not working therefore he could only see the things happening he couldn't hear anything 
after the holy eucharist his father came up to him and asked him well son how did you like the mass and the son said yes dad it was so nice and the father asked him can you describe the mass and the son started describing the mass he said a man like superman came inside referring to the priest in his dress and then superman came inside and superman was searching for something first he looked for it under the table referring to the priest kissing the altar at the start of the mass and he couldn't find it under that table and therefore he asked all the people where is it and all the people looked and said sorry we don't know and he kept searching and searching then he went and sent those small supermans at the side to go and search for it they took the torches they went inside they searched for it they couldn't find it they came back and said sorry we don't know and he kept searching and searching and in the end he found it in that small refrigerator behind and then he opened the fridge he distributed the sweets to everyone then he washed all the dishes he put it at the side and then he said tata bye bye and everyone went back home a big show dear brothers and sisters many times for us the eucharist becomes a show maybe because we don't understand what the eucharist actually is what is the eucharist the word tells us adam and eve committed a sin and when adam and eve committed a sin they fell from that greater dignity that god had always wanted for the people of god that is why genesis 1:26 and 27 says god said let us create human beings in our image and likeness so human beings had that greater dignity of being in the image and likeness of god but with the sin of adam and eve human beings lost that dignity and god always wanted to raise that dignity once again a lot of prophets were sent but none of them could raise that dignity and that is when the father sent his son he sent his son into the world so that the son would give of his own self and he would raise the dignity of human kind that is why every time we partake in the body and blood of jesus we are being raised in our dignity as the children of god hallelujah 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 jesus giving of himself in the form of a little piece of bread and a little wine we call it transubstantiation basically it means the substance changes but everything else remains the same therefore when we look at it the exteriors will always remain the same there's no difference it will look like bread it will taste like bread it will look like wine it will taste like wine but no more is it just bread or wine it the substance has changed and therefore it has become the body and blood of jesus christ praise the lord hallelujah there are many people who find this difficult to understand and that is why they will always tell us how can you people say this just look at it it looks like bread it tastes like bread it looks like wine it tastes like wine then how can you say that it is the body and blood of jesus and when they lead us astray by saying things like this many of many of us are so taken up by it that our minds also start wavering 
dear brothers and sisters when we let our minds waver and have doubts about the body and blood of Jesus remember we are no better than the people at the time of Jesus there's the same thing that happened john chapter 6 jesus speaks about his body and blood the bread of life and he gives a series of statements in john 6:35 we read jesus said to them i am the bread of life whoever comes to me will never be hungry and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty then he goes on in verse 51 I am the living bread that came down from heaven whoever eats of this bread will live forever and the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh verse 53 so Jesus said to them very truly I tell you unless you eat the flesh of the son of man and drink his blood you have no life in you those who eat my flesh and drink my blood will have eternal life praise the lord hallelujah as jesus made these series of statements we read many people find it very difficult to accept and therefore in verse 52 the jews then disputed amongst themselves saying How can this man give us his flesh to eat? How can this man give us his flesh to eat? What rubbish is he talking? Eating flesh and drinking blood. This is impossible. And that is why we read further in verse 60 when many of his disciples heard it they said this teaching is so difficult who can accept it? This teaching is so difficult who can accept it? Dear brothers and sisters they found it difficult to accept the teachings of the lord when he spoke about his body and his blood they found it difficult to accept that teaching and that is why we read in verse 66 because of this many of his disciples turned back and no longer went about with him many of his disciples turned back and no longer went about with him who were these people what does the word tell us just now they were disciples they were disciples they had walked with jesus 3 years they walked with the lord they saw him doing healings miracles they saw everything but yet the moment they didn't understand a concept they thought they would abandon the lord and they walked off dear brothers and sisters when others lead us astray when others lead us astray and we start having doubts about the real presence of the lord this is the same thing that we are doing when we doubt and we say how can it be the body and blood this is the same thing that we are doing the dis- they were disciples and yet they chose to abandon the lord just because they didn't understand the concept and their problem was they were trying to understand it with their intellect you cannot understand the eucharist with your intellect you cannot comprehend the eucharist with your intellect it is too big for us to understand it is a mystery and if a mystery can be understood a mystery ceases to remain a mystery it is a mystery and therefore if ever you want to understand the eucharist don't understand it with your intellect don't approach it with your intellect approach it with your heart that is the only way you will understand the holy eucharist an approach that saint john had we read in john chapter 13 John the beloved disciple on the day of the last supper how was he seated what was the position that saint john had he was reclining he was reclining his head on the chest of jesus 
the gospel of saint john is very symbolic what does this mean reclining his head on the chest of jesus wasn't it that he was surrendering his intellect to the heart of jesus he was surrendering his intellect to the heart of jesus that is the best approach you can have to the eucharist surrender our intellect to the heart of the lord don't ever try to understand the eucharist using your brains understand it with your heart it is so sad that at those moments the disciples chose to move off just because they didn't understand the concept dear brothers and sisters these men had seen everything jesus did and yet they chose to move off after they go there's a very touching statement that is made by jesus in verse 67 of john 6 jesus asked the 12 do you also wish to go away do you also wish to go away a very touching statement and as he makes that statement peter replies and says lord to whom shall we go you have the words of eternal life lord to whom shall we go you have the words of eternal life dear brothers and sisters do you think that peter understood all that jesus said do you think that peter understood when jesus spoke about changing of his body of giving his body and drinking his blood do you think peter understood all that no peter didn't understand that if you go through the bible you will realize that peter never understood anything whenever jesus spoke anything to peter nothing got into his head then forget if he cannot understand simple things what is he going to understand this he didn't understand it yet though he did not understand it he looked at the lord and he said lord you have said it is your body and blood i believe it is your body and blood that is faith the moment he looked at the lord the moment he heard the words of jesus he looks at jesus and he says you have the words of eternal life master you have said that it is your body and blood i'm not going to doubt that it is your body and blood that is faith for you dear brothers and sisters many of us get carried away by what other people tell us many of us get carried away when others give us wrong ideas about the holy eucharist many people tell us that the eucharist does not make logical sense there is no sense in bread and wine changing into the body and blood of jesus it is not logical that is what many tell us but i would ask you why should the eucharist be logical nothing that jesus ever did was logical all throughout his life nothing jesus did was logical he touched and healed the blind that was not logical he healed the deaf and the dumb that was not logical he healed the paralyzed that was not logical he brought the dead back to life that was not logical the cross was not logical then why is it that only the eucharist should be logical dear brothers and sisters many people lead us astray by speaking about logic but let us remember jesus told us this would we rather believe human ideas human fake ideas or would we rather believe jesus's word in the bible itself he spoke about it he said this is my body and this is my blood and when he said that he meant a real presence not a symbolic presence there are many people who tell us it is a symbol of the body and blood of jesus no it is not a symbol if jesus meant it to be a symbol of his body and blood jesus would have taken the bread broken it given it to them and said take and eat this is a symbol of my body he would have blessed the wine and said take and eat this is a symbol of my blood that is not what he said 
He said, this is my body. This is my blood. Take and eat and take and drink. He speaks about a real presence. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 And all that he said in John chapter 6. On the day of the last supper. Jesus starts bringing it into action. When he takes that bread. And he breaks it. And he gives it to them. Blesses the wine. Gives it to them. The meal dimension of the Holy Eucharist. The meal dimension of the Holy Eucharist. The Last Supper. Dear brothers and sisters. It is so significant what Jesus does on that day. The word tells us. And we say during the consecration too. On the night he was betrayed, Jesus took bread. There was betrayal. Jesus knew there was betrayal. On the moment of the last supper, Jesus knew there was betrayal. He could see it all around him. There was Judas sitting next to him. There was betrayal there. Yet Jesus takes that bread and takes that cup. There was Peter sitting there. Peter, just after these, just moments after these, he would deny Jesus three times. There was betrayal there. Yet Jesus takes that bread and takes that cup. He could see all the disciples. He could see Peter, James and John. These three men would go off to sleep when he cried and prayed at Gethsemane. There was betrayal there. Yet Jesus takes the bread and takes the cup. All those 12 disciples, all of them would abandon Jesus and walk off. There was betrayal there. Yet he took the bread and he took the cup. On that night he was betrayed, he did it. Dear brothers and sisters, every time we come into the Eucharistic presence and there is betrayal in our hearts, with our attitudes of sin, with our attitudes of filth, with our minds that have gone away from Jesus and we sit in the Eucharistic presence with that betrayal in our heart, the Lord doesn't stop his Eucharistic presence. He still takes the bread and he takes the cup. This is for you to have eternal life. And what he does on the day of the Last Supper doesn't end over there. The very next day on the cross, Jesus brings it into action. On the day of the Last Supper, Jesus breaks that bread. He blesses that cup. On the day of the crucifixion, he breaks his body and he sheds his blood and he says, this is for you to have eternal life. This is for you so that you may have eternal life. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He sheds his blood. He breaks his body. The sacrificial dimension of the Holy Eucharist. The Eucharist is not only about the Last Supper. The Eucharist has two dimensions. The meal dimension and the sacrificial dimension. The Last Supper and the crucifixion. And that is why... Every time we come into the Eucharistic presence, we are not just coming to the table of the Lord. We are coming at the foot of the cross of Jesus. We are coming at the foot of the cross of Jesus and we are experiencing the sacrifice of Christ. Remember, mind you very clearly, we are not repenting repeating the sacrifice of Christ but we are becoming one with the same sacrifice of Christ they can they cannot be two sacrifices that one same sacrifice we are sharing in that sacrifice we are becoming a part of history every time we celebrate the holy eucharist we become a part of history we are becoming one with the same sacrifice of Christ. Dear brothers and sisters, we are standing this moment at the foot of the cross of Jesus. 
the same sacrifice maybe we can think to ourselves how can it be the same sacrifice after all jesus died 2000 years back but let me tell you jesus is not restricted by time or by space and therefore every time we come for the eucharist we are at the foot of the cross there is a lord here bleeding for you there is a lord here sacrificing his body and blood for you the same sacrifice and that is why whenever in life you are broken and shattered don't move away from the eucharist whenever in life you're confused don't move away from the eucharist come right into the eucharist for here there is a lord who will understand your pain there is a lord here who will understand your pain put your pain along with the pain of the lord at this cross at this cross whenever you are broken in life and rejected come into the eucharistic presence for here there is a lord who cries out to you and says my child i know what it means to be rejected i am going through this on this cross he will understand what your rejection is all about the moments in life when you are humiliated and stripped of all your dignity don't move away from the eucharistic presence come right into the eucharistic presence for here there will be a lord who will understand what you are going through for he stands and he says i know what it means to be humiliated i know what it means to be stripped of all my dignity i've gone through this on this cross he'll understand your pain the moments in life when you have your physical ailments and you cry out because of your physical ailments don't move away from the eucharistic presence come right into the eucharistic presence there's a lord over here who will understand your pain and your suffering put your pain along with his pain dear brothers and sisters at every eucharist when you come into his presence bring in your pain and put it along with his there will be one person who will understand you it is jesus for the same sacrifice of the lord we share with him at this moment praise the lord hallelujah 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 hallelujah